Okay, guys, I uh, hope you're well. Been a little while since I've done a video on kind of our marketing strategies and uh, what, what we're doing at the moment. And I get quite a lot of questions on this. So I thought I'd just give like a an overview of the various different interesting strategies that we have been developing ourselves and implementing um, uh, over the past year or so. Um, so yeah, let, let's get straight into it. Uh, I'll start off by the thing that I get questioned about most, which is if you follow me on Instagram, um, I will sometimes share some story updates and I will often share um, story updates of us getting 10 to 15 uh, subs coming in per minute. And the question that I always get asked is, uh, are they free subs? And no, there, there's a discount on the page. I'll put up like a, a video now of the examples that I'm talking about. But I always get asked how, how we do this. And so those results come from TikTok Live. Uh, we have a very good strategy that we have dialed in. And I've kind of developed over the past over the past year and a half or so, um, the brings over insane amounts of traffic uh, is quite aggressive in, in the form of promotion. And so they do get banned quite quickly. Um, but those results, for those of you who are interested, because I always get asked what platform it comes from, uh, it's, it's all coming from, from TikTok Live. Um, so on that note, uh, I would actually also like to kind of make a, an announcement or a request of, of people um i've had a very kind of strange week where a lot of the things that i've been working to solve for like the past year um for over a year in some cases have actually like all come together um and i've actually been able to solve over the past week which has now led into uh me opening up a new set of problems that I have. So I will now go into and show you an example of a spoofed of a pre-recorded um, TikTok live stream, which is something that our engineers were able to, to solve. So if I just get the camera to zoom here, uh, you will see that my face is here and isn't moving. You can see that it's moving. I'm not moving my face. This is a pre-recorded video. So I can go ahead and do a live stream. We're now live. Again, the camera is um, You can see me standing there. So it's completely... Perfect. You can put on any video. You can put on any video that, that you want on there. Um, spoofing like any creator um on on tiktok live um so we kind of have like the the strategies dialed in really quite well and the only and again like you, again so we have like 10 to 15 subs coming in per minute so we have the strategies to be able to pull in the um the subscribers and we have the ability to kind of scale this i think as most people know by now we have access to huge numbers of of mobile devices of mobile phones uh, and we have the technical capability to um to be able to, to spoof cameras and essentially run run these strategies 24-7. And currently, the only thing that is limiting us in terms of scaling this is accounts. Is, is, uh, we have like a number of different ways of getting accounts. So we're able to grow accounts ourselves, uh, which I'll get onto like in a minute. We can have the creator grow accounts. But quite simply, um, to get a creator to like the levels that I want to be growing them to that can be done with these strategies alone. Um, we need a wider supply uh, of, of TikTok accounts. Uh, we also do have providers of TikTok accounts who will give us, like we will buy accounts of people. Um, but in most cases, they're only able to supply 50 to 100 accounts per month. And it, for me to really get to like the scale that I want to be operating this at with hundreds potentially thousands of phones operating live streams, um, again, operating 24-7, uh, we, we we simply haven't got access to that kind of uh, supply of accounts. So I am very interested to hear from anyone who either A, sells TikTok accounts, and again, like, we have access to, like, I'm not interested in, like, any low-quality TikTok accounts that aren't getting viewers. We're looking to partner with people who have access to a steady supply of TikTok accounts with 1,000 plus followers 
in tier one countries. We're not just interested in the US, we're interested in pretty much any tier one country. Um, and is able to supply on, like, we're not just interested in one here and there. Uh, we're looking at working with wholesale partners uh, who are able to provide these accounts. Or alternatively, we're also happy to operate um, 24 7 live streams for someone. So perhaps someone knows a seller. And if they're able to put us in touch with people who are successfully able to solve this problem for us, uh, we're happy to to run 24 uh, 7 pre recorded live streams uh, for, for you or for your creators as well. Um, so, yeah, that is kind of one, it's probably the main limiting factor uh, for us, like being able to scale a single creator up to like half a million or even a million dollars per month. I really don't see why it's not possible once we. Once we, we solve the TikTok account supply issue, um, which kind of leads me on to my next point, actually, of our like TikTok reposting bot, which is um, just to kind of share a little bit more about what we've been working on over the past year. And I actually can't take credit for, for this myself. I've partnered with, with a developer who reached out to me, um, who just essentially knew that we had the infrastructure um, of of phones and he had built out a system that, that we were able to plug in on top of our phones. Um, so I have to completely give credit to him. This wasn't built by myself, um, but we have now built a fully functional TikTok reposting bot that will do, handles absolutely everything from downloading the content from the creator's account to doing minor edits and adjustments uh, to to the, the content itself. Uh, we've also explored doing AI-based editing with uh, some libraries and various different different tools. Um, account warm-up process is also handled uh, completely automatically. The only part that is done manually currently is the actual account creation itself. Uh, and so we were then doing like three posts per day on these accounts, and this was to try to grow enough accounts of course we make revenue off of the reposting itself but to try to create enough uh, accounts to be able to supply our kind of pre-recorded live stream and even just the models themselves uh, with enough accounts to be able to do to be doing live streams 24 7 um and we had over a thousand accounts doing reposting and we could have scaled up to a lot more but we just realized that it it doesn't even come close to fulfill the number of accounts that, that, that we really need. Um, but we still do operate that. It does, when, when videos pick up views, of course, it drives traffic over to us. And it does help us to uh, organically grow accounts. Um, and we're kind of exploring a lot more into, um, yeah, into like the tricking tiktok into believing that this content is genuinely recorded on a mobile device on that particular mobile device and again with like kind of the it's how we we actually got onto the tiktok pre-recorded live stream camera spoofing it also applies to these accounts uh, so we're currently exploring how we can kind of roll roll that out at scale um, into essentially uploading content uh, that TikTok believes is actually recorded natively on that device, but it really is just reposted content. We're also doing like testing at the moment on various different types of edits that we can do to videos in order for TikTok to treat it as unique content. Uh, we have a list and then the bot will just manually kind of churn out 50 or 60 different variations of videos uh, that are then automatically uploaded on our accounts. And we, we do like three posts per day. On the accounts, uh, we also had quite a lot of kind of breakthroughs i would say but really like interesting information that we got from looking very deep into the tiktok api on kind of the information that they have on on the end user what they're able to see what they're not able to see um and we're kind of continuing to investigate that very very like technical stuff but continuing to investigate what are the actual parameters that tiktok tracks that determine uh, the quality of an account and things like when people are using a VPN or a proxy, for example, on a mobile device, it's completely visible um, to TikTok. TikTok are fully aware of this, not just from your IP address. They can actually see that you have a uh, VPN installed on that phone. So we've been kind of working on developing workarounds for this uh, that we're we're currently testing as well. Um, and just to 
Speaking of testing, we also still operate our manual device farm. Um, and they, I would say like the manual reposting is kind of like the testing arm of the business. Instead of us needing to like rewrite everything in code, change the scripts, test everything through code, which is obviously much slower, it's much, much faster for us to be able to give it to a manual team who have physical devices. And we can come up with a new strategy or a new idea that we want to test. For example, we were doing some tests on CapCut the other day. And instead of needing to write out a whole script for that, and it takes us days to kind of launch or even weeks potentially to, to actually launch and, and get that test running, on the same day, we're able to have a team with physical phones running tests for us. And that's essentially how we work. We have our team out here and we are essentially constantly testing and trying out new strategies. When we find something that's working, we will write code to turn that in, into a bot. And that is how we will kind of automate and scale out that particular strategy. So that is like the key focus for us at the moment, by the way, is we're, we're all in on TikTok. With the trend finder, I, I know I spoke about this before, I've done like a ton of updates to it in terms of trying to detect, trying to detect a video before a trend before it goes viral. And so Airtable actually released an update where you can have 125,000 records instead of just 50,000, which really enabled um, a lot more possibilities within Airtable as a database in terms of doing like relational databases which are databases that are able to kind of communicate with different tables within. I'll share a few examples. And that is a really, really good way to kind of pick up sounds that are trending because you can have TikToks related into a particular sound and you can see the average number of views that um, OnlyFans creators are receiving on a particular sound um, and just through, through using relations. And you can compare that back to their average views over particular periods. Uh, and that has been working kind of pretty well for us in, in terms of just churning out um, very high quality TikToks to create. Uh, but we're kind of really operating it at, at scale now. I mentioned before, I think we're scraping about 14,000 or 15,000 OnlyFans creators on TikTok. And it's kind of verging on the point that Airtable isn't really the right tool to do this in uh, anymore, particularly if we want to scale it much further just due to kind of Airtable's limitations um, so i'm in the process of migrating some of that stuff over rewriting some stuff um my partner has like rewritten some stuff and moved it over as well and just changing how how that all operates to allow us to, to scrape more profiles to scrape them faster because it's kind of about being very reactive uh when we're getting this data in on which um tiktoks to make we want to make sure that it's very up-to-date information we we want to be jumping on these trends before every other creator is it's the whole point of it so we're checking over twelve thousand OnlyFans creators every 60 minutes for have they made any new posts and running our comparison and algorithms on that compared to their previous performance and compared to other creators performance on the same sound to detect is this a high quality tiktok now, another issue that, um, not even issue, just kind of thing that we solved and thing that we were working on pretty heavily, we built out a, a fully automated dating farm for, for Bumble. Again, this is operating on mobile devices. Everything that I'm talking about, by the way, is all handwritten custom code. It's not anything that's available, plugins or software that, that are available on the market. It's all, all custom built. Um, of course, with a few like open source packages uh, installed here and there, but I just mean it's not a commercially available software. This is all built just by us entirely in the house. Um, and so that is a, a Bumble farm, uh, also with AI introduced. So I'll put up a video of, of some of the examples I have of that. But essentially, we we built out a bot that was able to go through, do swiping, based on particular ratios, we were doing text analysis of job titles to try to work out if this guy says he's a software developer, we swipe right on him. Um, so we had a particular list of job titles. If they were very high quality jobs, they would always get a, a right swipe. AI chatting kind of built in. So very, very personal using the guy's first name, depending on what day of the week it is. If it's Friday, it would ask things like, you know, what are your plans for the weekend? Really high quality, um, tool and just very kind of realistic 
Um, again, doing all the chatting, funneling over to Instagram if the account was moderated. So if an Instagram was removed from the buyer, uh, we were able to just, the bot would detect that and it would add it back in automatically. So it was all completely automated. Uh, the only part that wasn't automated is uh, the account creation. That was all handled by our team in Georgia. Um, the main reason that we, we weren't able to automate that was through lack of finding a very stable um, SMS verification software that had an API. Often we would find that we're kind of waiting around for responses to come in. We just found that it wasn't worth automating and to keep our team on it. However, um, so we have this software fully built. We actually have it also built for Badu and for Tinder as well. Uh, and we were operating it for a number of months and we had it profitable. Uh, we were, we were making money, uh, upgrading to gold, slowly increasing the swipes every single day, but we still just found that the churn rate was pretty high, even with running an essentially undetectable system. I don't want to say too much more on, uh, some of the things that, that we were doing, um, because I do believe that some of these platforms kind of watch videos such a, a, as these uh, to understand how people are, are using their platforms so they can integrate various different patches and so on. Uh, it would only make sense that, that they do that. So I won't give away too much, but we kind of had very good uh, feedback of what was being detected and what wasn't being detected, why certain things were being detected, and we were able to kind of manipulate um Manipulate certain things w w within the application, and that's kind of uh, without meaning to sound too vague. We had very interesting data on why things were, were, were being deleted. However, we uh, we decided then just to pivot back into TikTok for like a number of different reasons, and the main one being is we could churn out these uh, Bumble accounts all day. We would make like a hundred accounts per day more even like it was no problem to, to to hire in georgia and to kind of scale this up however at the end of like a 30-day period like a 45-day period we would most likely notice a 90 percent ban rate o over 45 days maybe over even less than in fact so what do you really have to kind of and, and yeah we can keep creating new accounts and keep kind of fulfilling that supply However, with an alternative platform like TikTok, we can put in the same amount of effort and we see a very, very low ban rate. So instead of working on Bumble and let's say we make 3,000 accounts in a month and at the end of the month, we only have 300 left uh, because we've seen a very high ban rate. We figured it would be much smarter to kind of put the same manpower um, into generating TikTok accounts at scale, which see a much lower ban rate. So if we create 3000 TikTok accounts in a month, most likely at the end of that month, we will be left with about 2,500 uh, TikTok accounts because we see a, a relatively low ban rate, perhaps e even more. Uh, TikTok is also where I kind of, as I mentioned at the start of the video, always made the most money. And we also knew that we could churn out the accounts to be then used for our live stream strategy. So that was kind of the reason to, to pivot back over to it. We do plan on moving back in, into Bumble and back into dating apps, uh, particularly as like app cloner, people are getting kicked off of there, which means the, the competition is getting, getting taken out, which maybe sounds a bit hard to say in, in a public space, but, um, the, the less, uh, the less defense creators on these apps promoting their stuff. And the harder these apps make it, the kind of better it is for us, the, the better returns that, that you'll make. I think everyone's fully aware. When I first started using Bumble and Tinder for promotion, about two and a half years ago, uh, I remember making a Tinder account and we, I got about five subs, paid subs, uh, just off of a handful of swipes. And it, it's nothing like that anymore. Um, so we're kind of just waiting to see how like the market uh, plays out. Uh, what takes place there. We did also consider like renting out our devices. Uh, that's another thing to mention. All of our devices are fully, you're able to remote control uh, from our custom built command center. This isn't using visor or like any of these other, again, this is all custom built. So we have our devices plugged in by USB. 
into Mac minis, uh, they go into, into USB ports and we have our dashboard for each of our employees where they're able to log in there and any activity that can be performed on that mobile device, they're able to perform remotely from anywhere in the world. There's a slight delay, um, kind of depending on the, the Wi-Fi, um, up to like a two second delay, I, I would say. Okay, and then just to show you like a little bit about our uh, remote control automation farm. So like I said, this is, these are all of our devices that are plugged in over in the next room and we have remote control access to them. We can see here connected to Mac. Status is active, Bumble status is set up, Badu is set up, automation isn't currently running um, and our software is installed. Here we have various different things that we can control remotely. Um, so we can reset the device, uh, which we have built into it. So it will automatically install all of the apps that are required. It will install the Wi-Fi profile um, so that the team doesn't need to, to do all of that. It will automatically connect to the Wi-Fi and go through like the um, iPhone setup process. Reboot the phone, run the bot manually if you want to trigger it manually. TikTok warm-up process I mentioned already we have um, built into this. So we, our entire TikTok warm-up process is automated. Logs if we want to check what's going on. And then most interestingly, control. So we can come into this device and any activity that someone is able to perform. You see I've got complete control. Um, I can come and click in here. And again, this, this is on a physical phone. It's not on an emulator. Uh, on the right hand side here, like I can open various different apps. So instead of needing to navigate onto the homepage, uh, just to kind of make things a little bit quicker, uh, I can do everything from here. I don't think I can actually go into, into these things because we, this is a, a live phone and it has like some different information that, that we don't really want to, to share. Um, but we can do everything from like resetting VPN profiles uh, from here to anything that, that you can imagine. Um, like you can change the GPS location from, from this dashboard. Um, we can, if we want to move it into a different location, that's fine. We're not using 3U tools or any of this other software. Uh, it's a, a custom built solution again, where we're actually walking around these various different locations. Uh, at a few kilometers per hour, it will take breaks. At night, it will stop moving. So it looks like the creator is sleeping or has gone back, back home. Um, so we've really gone into like quite a lot of detail um, on this stuff. And of course, this isn't just limited. I can bring up the, um, the keyboard is down here. It's not recorded though. It's not in the my recording area. Um, but yeah, any activity that can be done on a, you can swipe as well. Uh, we can scroll down any activity that can be done on a physical phone we're able to uh, have our team perform uh, remotely um, so we just also and you can see like the lag really isn't that bad either I would say it's at like two seconds um, two to three seconds maybe per action which does kind of add up um, like when you're doing hundreds of different actions but still like the performance and now it's gone a little bit slow now I'm giving this demonstration the performance is re really really quite good um, so we're also just looking at other ways to kind of monetize and and utilize um, this system so we did consider actually turning it into like a essentially like a paid service where someone could rent a device because we have all like the backend software, we have the infrastructure, um, we have everything running on, like we have Bumble software kind of working and, and ready to go. And as well, we have all the, the TikTok stuff. Um, but the, the only thing that we haven't got, we're, we're just limited on time and like limited resources, which is also why we pivoted away for, from Bumble. It's not a case of it not working or not being able to do it. It's a case of allocating your resources where we see that we will make the most money. Um, and so currently that is, that is on, on TikTok. Um, and the other great thing about TikTok is I know that I often say to like focus on one channel and kind of do it really, really well. Um, but anything that you figure out on TikTok applies very well to Instagram as well. Um, all of the edits and adjustments and manipulations and changing of metadata that we do to TikTok videos, um, to re-upload them on, on TikTok works equally well on Instagram reels. So these are like, we're essentially killing two birds with one stone. 
And these birds happen to be the two largest social media platforms at the moment. Someone sent me a statistic the other day. It's something like two or three hours the average 18 to 24 year old spends on TikTok per day. And I would imagine that's a similar statistic on, on Instagram as well. So simply by working out how to do TikTok reposting and republishing, I think that you have like a huge amount of leverage, um, because that translates across equally well onto, onto Instagram, to YouTube shorts and onto all of these other kind of short, there, there's plenty of others as well, by the way, if you just search on the app store competitors to TikTok, uh, there's quite a few other, um, short form content platforms that you can also use for promoting your, your models. Don't quite have the user base that TikTok has, but there's also less competition on there as well. And they can also be a little bit more lenient with, uh, with, with the type of content that, that they're willing to accept. And then again, just by kind of scaling internationally, just by, um, adding on a ton of different locations for all your TikTok accounts are so covering all the tier one countries, you know, in Western Europe covering all over the U S Canada, Australia, uh, there's like a, a huge audience there. So, um, and we just feel that it's, it's more lucrative for us to focus on, on cracking that. And then we will move back on to, to bumble at, at a later date. Um, and yeah, that's kind of an update for me on, on, on what we've been working on. And again, we're really interested in, in finding people who can can supply high quality TikTok accounts. There's a ton of sellers of TikTok accounts on all these different websites, on accounts market, on Z2U, on like all, all over the place. There's loads of different sellers of accounts, but we're, we're really struggling to find someone who's able to fulfill our capacity uh, because we genuinely need thousands. That That is the amount that we're looking to buy every month. Thousands of TikTok accounts with over 1000 followers that are high quality and that are receiving uh, views. It's just very interested for anyone in the space to kind of reach out to us, whether it's just selling us accounts directly or they want to partner with us on like a commission split, or they want us to run the strategy for them as well. We're, we're really quite open and we're, we're just looking to take on multiple partners. As long as you're able to provide like, I'd say a minimum of a hundred, even, even like a minimum of 50 K okay, I would entertain. Then I will put my, my customer support, uh, telegram handle in the bio below. You can just reach out to them. Let us know a little bit about um, how many accounts you can supply any accounts that we can test out just to make sure that they do actually work. Um, and any information that you have, if you want us to follow a particular procedure, um, we have everything that you can think of 5g USA proxies, 4g USA proxies. German proxies, French, UK, Australia, we, we literally, Netherlands, we, we have all of them ready to go. We have the infrastructure here. We have the phones ready to go as well. We have the creators ready to go. We have the technology with pre-recorded live streams. The only thing that, that we're lacking is enough, uh, enough TikTok accounts. Yeah, that's an update for me. Any questions from anyone, um, feel free to, to leave a comment down below um again this was all this is all like custom built extremely like technical stuff so it's not really something i can release a, a guide on on how you can make majority of this stuff uh, has taken us months upon months to build um but yeah still very interesting to share nonetheless also if anyone's operating like similar farms i know a few people are and they prefer to be public about it i've spoken to a few people before Mostly people are operating on Android farms. I don't think I've actually come across anyone operating on a large scale iOS farm, but if there is someone out there, of course, I'd be more than happy to, to connect, um, and have a little chat about, about what, what you're doing and see if we can exchange some, some information. Other than that, thank you for watching.